Hi guys, how are you? Welcome back. Let's do another video. This one is going to be on macroeconomics, MMT, pure MMT. And uh, we'll kind of go over some of the things I've been saying for so many years now, uh, at least 2017. Um, so let's get started. So we had a, a print of 6.4% GDP and everybody got so excited. Like, oh my God, that's like the best in like 40 years. Oh my God. <laughs> Uh, these people are gullible. Uh, by that logic, uh, we should have lockdowns every year, and we'll print trillions of dollars, just hand it out to people. They can go to Amazon and buy stuff, and then we'll wait a year and say, oh "My God, look at the recovery! Oh my God, <laughs> they're gullible. They're gullible. That's not reality." All right. So here's some reality: uh, the number of unemployed uh, for 26. Uh, weeks or and over uh, has been rising. Okay, uh, that's not bullish for the economy. All right. Uh, in fact, uh, we've been at this, and this goes till March. So let's say 12 months, where we are uh, in a one-year period relative to where we were in a one-year period back in 2008, and we'll count it from here. Okay, we'll take December 2007. Right, and then we'll go to December 2008. Right, Th this is all the job loss that took place. We are twice that amount and rising. In fact, uh, it took the top came in uh, on April 10, uh, April 2010. That's almost uh, two years and change in months. Right, so two years and four months. So about 30 months to peak out. Don't expect this to be any different. Okay. Um, sure, the demographics are a little bit different. Sure, it might take, uh, you know, a little bit longer or a little bit less. It, it depends, you know, uh, on the situation and how they handle this going forward. But uh, don't expect things to get better anytime soon, economically speaking. Uh, the only V-shape that I see <laughs> is long-term unemployment. Okay, that's all I see. Long-term unemployment. All right. Uh, so let's take a look at uh, some of the stuff here uh, that I've been posting on Pure MMT. Um, number one, since 2017, I said, look, if you increase deficits, all you're going to do is fuel the savings bubble. Okay, uh, that's all you're going to do. And believe me, at the time, I never thought we are going to end up with a COVID, helicopter money, endless of trillions for everybody, uh, for me to be able to prove it. I, I thought, you know, it would, it would take years and years and years uh, for me to be able to prove that. Um, unfortunately, uh, it only took four years. Okay? Uh, so when you see the world stock market uh, cap is $111 trillion, 111 trillion. It's about 120% of global GDP, right? And you can see the how viciously it rose, right? I mean, just think about it. That if we were to say 60 trillion, I'm sorry, six trillion, uh, and we go back in time, it would be roughly where we were in 2016. So from 2016 till today, in five years, we have increased world stock market cap by uh, double. Double. Think about that. A little bit less, but double. Now, why do you suppose in the middle of an economic depression, because this is not even a, a recession, this is a depression, the stock market would rise so much? Where did they find the money suddenly? Where did it come from? Think about it. Right? Deficits. QE. Well, we could just QE uh, bonds out of existence. Okay. What are you going to do then? What are you going to do when you convert uh, bonds into cash? Well, the reserves. Really? Really? Okay. So if you go take a look at the uh, excessive reserves in the banking system, they're not $7.8 trillion. They're $3.8 trillion. Where's the other $4 trillion? Well, I don't know, but it's there. Yeah, Go, good luck finding it. Let me know when you find it, all right? Uh, so that's garbage, uh, more garbage there. Uh, okay, so let's take a look here. 
um, at all employees, total non-farm uh, population level, and you're going to see it that we're about 56%. Okay, this is your V-shaped recovery, guys. This is your 6.4. Oh my God, this is wonderful. Look at uh, this is great. GGP is kicking ass. Best in four years, uh, 40 years. There it is. Don't be gullible. All right. That's that's just for the for the sheep. That's not that's not for you smart people that follow pure MMT. Uh, yeah, there you go. Asset price inflation right there. Okay. Asset price inflation. That's that's what I've been telling you since 2014. Deficits are only good for the top five percent, and the liabilities go to the 95 percent. That's just the way it works. And if you think that we need more deficits so we can fix inequality, uh, no. You're going to make inequality worse because the profit mechanism is going to assure that the savings bubble is going to be pumped. All right. Here's BlackRock. Look at this. In 2009, BlackRock, BlackRock had about $1.5 trillion uh, assets under management. And today... They have nine trillion, nine trillion. In fact, in the beginning of uh, the pandemic, it was somewhere around uh, six and a half, seven, and now it's nine. Where did they find all those dollars? Tooth fairy. All right. So think about these things. All right. So let's take a look at. Um, let's just kind of recap here. Stimulus for the people, quote unquote. Right. Two hundred billion, then two point two trillion, then nine hundred billion. And now 1.9 trillion. That's 5.2 trillion dollars in extraordinary spending. All right, GDP, real GDP, inflation adjusted is about 18. Now I think it's 19 trillion. All right, so it's about 25 percent of real GDP that we just pumped into the market. Free money for everybody. And now they want two, three trillion. I think I don't, I don't know what they want. I think they'll probably end up with another trillion for the green new dicks or deals or whatever. All right, so add another trillion, six trillion. Okay, let's add more. Why not? <laughs> um, so what has happened since then? All right, homes, all-time high. Used cars, all-time highs. Average new car price, all-time highs. Stocks, all-time highs. Bonds, all-time highs. Cryptos, all-time highs. Inequality, all-time highs. You see where I'm going with this? It takes 144 hours of work to purchase one share of the stock market. Inequality again, it's all time highs. Weekly unemployment claims are all time highs. Even today, even today. When you go back to, I think, 1965, we're at all time highs. Okay? Uh, we're still nowhere near uh, the 200, 250, 300,000. Right? V shaped recovery. Oh my God, look, it's 6.4. <laughs> yeah. Come back next year. Tell me if it's 6.4. I'll be impressed then. All right. Uh, I'll, I'll eat crow. I'll admit I was wrong. Good luck with that. All right. So uh, federal budget deficit now, and that's just the latest. It's 4.9. I mean, four, uh, four trillion, 4.1 trillion. Okay. Uh, real gross domestic product again. Look at the deficits. It's just out of control out of control. How about GDP growth relative to every dollar that is printed? It keeps collapsing and getting worse and worse and worse. What does that mean? This is the report card of deficits, okay? Because you should be getting at least, for every new dollar that you print out of thin air, you should be getting one dollar worth of GDP growth, okay? You're not getting that. In fact, you're getting about 16 cents to every new dollar disaster. You should actually be getting more than one dollar of GDP for every new dollar that is printed, right? Because it's it's a cumulative account. You should be getting two, three dollars. And the opposite is happening. This ended back in 1981. And we've been printing and 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 printing. And the economy is getting slower and slower and slower and slower and slower. Right? GDP growth is anemic. So let's do the math. 2010, I'm um, sorry, 2008, 2007, de public debt was 10 trillion. 
uh, and real GDP was about uh, 15.5 trillion. Fast forward, uh, real GDP today is about 19 trillion. All right, so it's about 3.5 trillion more. But the deficit is 18 trillion dollars more at 28 trillion and change. All right. So you see, deficits don't work. That just that's just an illusion to th make you think that the government can do something, that the government can print value for a currency, that the government can just print money and economic growth is just going to magically fucking appear uh, because some politician said so. No, no, that's not the way it works. Remember, the government can only print digits. That's it. Valueless digits. There's no value behind them. It is up to the private sector to be able to take those dollars and value them with innovation, blood, sweat, tears, production, okay, efficiency, and make the economic pie bigger for everybody. The private sector does that, not printing. That's why MMT is wrong. That's why MMT, when <laughs> and MMT is going to eat their words, I'm telling you. You're going to see, and, I, uh, and I'm, I'm willing to guess what's going to get them in the end is inflation. Because it's really cute to say, well, don't worry about it. We're just going to print to inflation, and then we'll stop. We'll stop printing then. Yeah, really? Okay, well, <laughs> inflation is about to get real. <laughs> Uh, we're, we're not there yet, but we're on the on the cusp of inflation getting real. And not inflation because we all have so much money, we're out consuming, and we can't meet demand. No, that inflation is a multifaceted word. If commodity prices okay, start to soar, then guess what? You're going to feel it at the gas pump. You're going to feel it when you go to the grocery shop. You're going to feel it when you want to fix up your house. You're going to feel it everywhere. And the whole entire time, they'll be like, oh, no, there's no inflation. Core inflation is fine. Don't worry about it. And uh, the reality is going to be that there's going to be inflation. And do you think that uh, they're just going to stop? You, you think MMT is going to come out? Well, we should stop printing uh, because we have inflation. You think they're going to say that? They won't. They won't. But you'll be paying more for everything. Uh, the kind of inflation that we're getting is excessive deficits in the savings bubble that are overflowing and shifting from stocks, bonds, real estate into commodities. Remember, commodities are a small market, okay? So small markets, as soon as you pour a little bit of money in there, price is going to poop right back up. And uh, we're right now on the cusp of breaking out, okay? right here 13 year channel to the downside if we break out here and we start running um <laughs> it's going to be fun i can't wait to see the how they're going to try to twist it and turn it from the mmt crowd and how they're going to be eating their words and people are going to be like you know what they said print to inflation, and I'm paying a lot more at the grocery store. Uh, this is problematic. This is problematic. And, you know, y you can you can eat some inflation for a period of time, and companies can do the same thing, like Starbucks, for example. Uh, they don't seem to really be affected by uh, coffee because they hedge it. And a lot of industri industries do hedge. But remember that... Um, you know, they can't hedge forever. And, you know, depending on how long this lasts, uh, it's going to be a problem, okay? And we're, again, this is food inflation right here, agriculture, right? We're right up against the resistance area. We're so close to breaking out. And if we do, believe me, <laughs> people are going to realize what MMT is all about, right? Uh, you know, you look at lumber, right? Look at lumber, <laughs> Up 500%. Well, it's supply chains. Yeah, okay. A year later, it's supply chains. One day you're telling me the economy is fine, everything is fine, we're growing, it's 6.4, oh my God, V-shaped recovery. And then you're telling me the supply chains are all broken. You can't have it both ways, guys. You got you to gotta come up with a better story. All right? You can't, you can't have it both. You can't say both. <laughs> it's contradictory. All right? Look at this. Straight up, 1,500. 
It used to be 250, 200. Right? I'm telling you, inflation is going to get MMT. And on top of that, you want a Green New Deal? Okay. All right. Why not? Why not? Let's get a Green New Deal. Let's start repaving the same roads we had before, which is going to create no efficiency. All right. We're going to repave. We're going to rebuild the same bridges we have. And by the way, we're ninth in the world in infrastructure. Look it up. Uh, no, not ninth. I think 13th. 13th in the world in infrastructure. Out of 200 nations, we're number 13, and <laughs> we need we need to rebuild America. You know who's ahead of us? Some city states: Qatar, Singapore, uh, UAE. Right? Small city states. U.S. is a continent. <laughs> we're still 13th. We don't have an infrastructure problem, but whatever. Whatever. You wanna you wanna you know start to. Uh, Rebuild stuff, no problem. Things that are, don't need to be rebuilt, why not? Let's do it. Let's see how much you're going to pay in commodity prices. How much we're all going to pay for commodity prices. Because you think you're just going to print it up and pay for it. And look, see, this is how we pay for it. This is how we sell it. This is how we, okay. All right, wait till you, you start paying at the grocery store. I'll tell you all about <laughs> commodity prices and how... You know, we can print to infinity. We can no, we can pr print to inflation. Yeah, just like taxes drive the currency, right? That's what they say. Taxes are what values the currency. Okay, so Venezuela has a, a taxing problem. The dollar is falling because we're not taxing enough. Right? The economy, relative to all the printing, is not growing because we don't tax enough. That doesn't make any sense, right? It doesn't make any sense at all. You should be getting at least 2 $3 of GDP for every new dollar you create it. If government could, in fact, uh, print and value it with taxes, uh, and uh, the monopolist is the price setter and tax credits and all this nonsense. That's nonsense. You're playing with words, but it has no value in the real world of economics. None. The only thing deficits do is feed the savings bubble for the top 5%, increase the liabilities for the 95%, and you're going to get less and less and less GDP growth for every new dollar that's created. Okay? Uh, let's continue here. Um, yeah. There it is. Real gross domestic product. It's increased now. Okay? Um, what else? What else? These these are a little bit old. Labor for labor force participation is all the way back where it was in 1975. This is the V-shaped recovery everybody's so excited about. Oh my God, MMT works. We can just print and fix everything. This is wonderful, wonderful. Uh, let's recap this nonsense that oh, higher interest rates cause inflation by uh, uh, Mosler and uh, Mike Norman, and they go on and. They, they're not even embarrassed to say it. They're not even embarrassed. Luckily for us, Turkey uh, did make such a stupid mistake as to lower interest rates uh, and <laughs> collapse the currency in the process. Bad for them. Bad for their people. So the currency is devaluing, and finally they decide to raise interest rates. Right? So what happened? The currency started to stabilize, even even rose a little bit. And then they said, oh, we're going to lower rates. We'll lower rates down from 22% down to 8%. Oh, that's wonderful. Great job thinking. Yeah, yep. That's how we're going to control inflation. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, Warren Mosley and Mike Norman are right. What happened? <laughs> Turkey should have collapsed. And then they're like, oh, shit. <laughs> oh, shit. And November 2nd, 2020, they started raising them again. What happened to the currency? It started to rise. started to stabilize again. Right? And then they're like, oh, wait, we're going to lower rates again. Oh, you're fired. Oh, pfft. There you go. Turkish Lira collapses again. Okay? Lower interest rates do not tame inflation. They don't lower inflation. That is just nonsense. That's, again, more MMT nonsense. I, I don't know how much more I can keep debunking before people start to realize... 
uh, how wrong they are. Just how wrong they are. They're just listening to gibberish from somebody that has no clue as to what the reality is, or he does have a clue, and he's just scamming people. I, I don't know what it is. But. All right, uh, let's look at the uh, U.S. stock market. Uh, up $44 trillion. $44 trillion. And nominal GDP is $21.5 trillion, which is more than 200% more than 200 percent remember what i told you excessive deficits are going to lead to savings bubble stocks bonds commodities and real estate that's exactly what's happening okay um by the way uh, a record 34 percent of all household income uh in the united states is funded by government what do you think about that yeah soviet union United Soviet uh, America, y'all can just stay home, we're going to print money, give it to you, and we're just going to grow the economy 6.4% of a year, don't worry about it. Right. V-shaped recovery. The number of hours uh, that it requires to purchase an S&P, we talked about this already, 141, I think I put 144 in the other one. Who is the biggest beneficiary, one of the biggest beneficiaries of... Um, of deficits and you can see what it is right imports right it's the exporting companies uh, country sorry to the US the benefit because when you we import we're exporting dollars to those countries well what happens when you're exporting dollars to those countries you're paying them right what do they do with that money they create jobs so they can keep producing and uh, exporting to the US Right. So that's one. Of, that's about 850 billion a year. It's 71 billion. It's an all-time high, by the way. Um, what happened to that trade deal? Trump was supposed to do. <laughs> yeah, we reached a trade deal. Don't worry about it. Uh, yeah, everything is for phase one. What? Uh, phase one. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no, don't worry. Phase two. Yeah, they want to make a deal. Yep, Chinese want to make a deal. Yeah, we got this covered. Don't worry about it. I'm a great deal maker. Great, 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 great deal maker. Right. Okay. Yeah. That's whatever. That's that's you know, people don't understand. They just listen to whatever politicians say, and they're like, yeah, oh my God, he's gonna make a great deal. He's wonderful. Uh, by the way, here's the uh, total reserve depository institutions. <laughs> yeah, you're short there a little bit, buddy. Yep. I don't see 7.8 trillion in uh, reserves. <laughs> Nonsense. Look at nominal home prices. Look at that. It's because it's a V-shaped recovery. You know, it's just wonderful. There's no supply. <laughs> There's no supply. And then when they do have to build those homes, uh, you know, they're going to be making it out of clay. <laughs> clay. Yeah, deficits are good. They don't cause asset price inflation. They don't cause bubbles. No, not at all. Uh, QE? Nah, come on. Come on, man. You're negative. Yeah, I'm negative. Okay. Did you ever consider maybe you don't have a clue? <laughs> Did you ever consider that? Just maybe. Uh, outside chance, maybe. All right. So this is household nonprofit organization consumer credit liabilities levels relative to GDP. And we are now at 19.4, make it 19.5% of all GDP comes from uh, debt, okay? Household debt. I ah, don't worry about it. It's nothing. Okay. And by the way, it spiked uh, to 21.1 momentarily. Right. We're heading in the right direction for sure, though, right? Before you know it, <laughs> oops. What did I do here? Uh, no. Oh, I screwed it all up. Yeah, we're heading in the right direction. Everything, you know, before you know it, all of GDP is going to be just one big debt. One big debt. Going back to 19... Uh, oh, come on. Don't do this to me. Come on. Be nice. Don't do this. Twice now you've done it. Twice. Let's try this again. Yeah, we're heading in the right direction. Before you know it, 100% of GDP is going to be public debt or uh, private debt. <laughs> Household debt. Yeah. V-shaped recovery, we do so good. 6.4. Yes, yes, unbelievable. 
You're not an economist, Nick. You don't know what you're talking about. No, you don't. <laughs> All right. So, um, okay, I'm going to tell you right now, you better hope to God <laughs> that the commodities do break out here. Okay. Uh, because if we don't, we're going to at very least go into a sideways market. All right. That's my uh, my reading of the situation right now as of today. You better hope to God this keeps going up. I'm telling you right now. Uh, uh, if it doesn't, oof. conversely, if it does break out, oh, be prepared for some outrage. A lot of you people are going to be pissed off for paying all that extra money for no reason just because it's too much money in the savers in the hands of the few and they're going out and speculating in uh, asset price inflation and commodities and then you get stuck paying the bill. And again, it's not so much the the rise of inflation. It's the speed of which inflation uh, in commodities are rising. It's the speed because what what's going to happen if you keep going at this rate, you're going to end up going contango. And what's contango? Well, it starts to... In, uh, where the, the, the delivery month is going to be uh, at a cheaper price than what the going rate is going to be on that day. And everything starts to flip. <laughs> then what are you going to do? Oh, we'll just print some more. Yeah, okay, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. Okay. Uh, then you're going to start really having some issues. All right. So that's it for this video. Um, we'll see what happens this week. Uh, again, if you guys want to learn more, uh, you want to see my um, analysis? You want to have access to me 24/7? Uh, if you're if you if you're not in the tier, you don't. Uh, or a perma bear. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, or you're a perma bull. You could you could have difficulties uh, listening to me all day. Anyway, um, come down to Patreon.com/slash/RealMacro. Uh, like, subscribe at least uh, on this video, and. Um, don't forget to, tr to follow me on TradingView as well. And that's about it for this video, guys. Uh, again, thank you for your support over the years. Uh, this is now my, what, 11th year. <laughs> uh, I tapered off on the videos. I kind of went into my little shell uh, for the past, uh, what, four years now, since 2017. But I think I'll be coming a little bit out of my shell. I think it's time for me to come out of my shell. Start making videos again for YouTube. Uh, I'm doing it in a trading view. You can get a lot of good free stuff there. And again, for my subscribers, uh, don't forget to come down to patreon.com slash real macro. Like, subscribe, follow. All right. Again, thank you for all these years of your support. Thank you because I can now show you what I've been saying for so many years <coughs> as to what the results are going to be. There's a time to be a bull, and there's a time to be a bear, and there's a time to call out economic bullshit uh, when you see it, all right? And believe me, there is nothing w worse than publicly being wrong. I, I'd much rather lose my money than to be publicly wrong, okay? <laughs> so try it. Try it. You, you know, you can try to, you know mumble your words you can try to twist it like this in the end of the day when you're wrong you're wrong and everybody knows it and that's it and that's that's not a very good feeling it's a horrible feeling believe me so i'll work hard to always tell you what the truth is at least from my point of view and you guys can do whatever you want with that information all right guys thank you take care have a great week and i'll talk to you soon Bye bye